today we are going to replace the stock radio in our 2012 Mercedes Sprinter van with this other radio that is a navigation, a backup camera, radio, DVD player combo that we got off of Amazon. And we're going to take you through detailed step-by-step -step instructions on how we installed it. Okay, here's the uh, radio popped out of the dash, the antenna connector, and the wiring harness going to the factory radio. And we're going to identify all the wires in the factory wiring harness and mate that up to our new harness uh, for the new radio. We'll be cutting all these off and splicing them in. We found this wiring diagram on the internet. You may want to pause it so you can look at it if you need to. We're going to use our uh, circuit testers here. I'm guessing we're not getting any ground from that. There we go. There's our hot all the time wire. Just like it says. Brown, brown and red. And test it again. That's not going to be the right one. None of these are hot, only with the key on. There's one hot all the time. And there's a lot more wires here mm -hmm. than what are here because this is the wiring diagram for if you have all the best speakers in the back and all of everything else that goes on. So, radio accessory switched 12 volt wire. Nope. Garth isolated the color codes for our front right and front left speaker wires here. And that's all the speakers we have in the van at the present time is the ones in the right front and the left front. Even though there are speakers in the door and up here, little tweeters up high, they're all connected with just these two pairs of wires. And so here on our new radio, we have our front left positive, front left negative, and front right positive, and front right negative. And so these are the four wires that we'll be splicing in to go to the speakers. Here's the wiring diagram for the new radio. All right, these have snap clips on them and it just pops free. You can see the clips here, here, these are the guide posts and the clips that snap it on. It has a little hooky clip that goes on the bottom. And this is where we have to get our wire fished through. These are wires that we brought in here previously for power to the back. And we're going to get our camera wire up through here and hit it towards the back of the van. And here is the little backup camera that this radio came with. And we're going to first run that wire to the camera all the way to the back. Here's the backup camera that was included with this radio kit. Here's the antenna that it comes with.
what we had to do to get this wire through here for the uh, backup camera was pull down the sun visor and so we could get a little room going here between the headliner and the roof of the van and then we were able to fish the wire through and uh, I went ahead and fished an extra wire through to use as a fish wire <laughs> so when we get ready to put another wire in we'll have something to pull on and if we do we'll add another wire to it and so we keep a continuous wire going through here for fishing because this is a hard place to get a wire through but uh, so now we have the camera wire the end of it here this has got to go down and under the dash and through and around and come back out over here by the radio and so that's the next step and then the wire itself is not going to reach all the way to the back of the van so we're going to have to uh, get an extension to put on there in order to put the camera at the very back here we are we took the uh, took these two panels off the bottom of the dash here just uh, three screws takes all this stuff off and then we use our handy dandy coat hanger to reach down under here and bring a wire through and around and under and watch you don't wrap it around more stuff than you have to and now we have our wire here where we can for the camera we can hook up to the back of the new radio here's the camera wire okay we have the uh, front speakers positive and negative right and left hooked up here we have our power wire we still have our reverse wire which triggers the camera the brake wire which allows you to use the DVD player uh, once the park brake is pulled on and we have a, a blue wire here P C O N T, and we're not sure what that is yet so we're working on the very last of these wires one other problem we've got is that we have an antenna wire that is a, a female connection and this radio takes a male connection here and so we'll have to get an adapter that has a male end to plug into here and then plug our female radio antenna into the back of it this is the uh, GPS antenna hooked up okay we have some more wire identification here um, this yellow wire with the black stripe is the power antenna wire that's in the uh, the bundle in the van. I figured out what this is for, and we're going to hook this to the P dot A and T antenna. This is the antenna booster. When you look on the radio, you have a selection for local or distance, and it uh, it's boosting the antenna somehow to so that you can pick up the radio signal farther away. That's where this wire goes. We're going to hook these two together. Now, these two wires, the brown and the brown red pair that are twisted together, these are data wires. Okay? These go to the computer. And these are the wires that were used for the computer to turn the radio on. And we can't use these wires because we need. An accessory wire now we had our accessory wire hooked in with our battery plus wire and this turned the radio on just fine but even though we would turn the radio off and turn the clock display off after the radio was off the radio was still energized inside and was running the battery down so we needed a live wire that was only live whenever the accessory switch was on, when the, when the key is on in the on position. So we went down to the fuse block. Yeah. Here is where we got our accessory power from, right here. Number six on this fuse block under the dash. And in the book, it shows number six, terminal 873A engine, 10 amp. This circuit is only hot when the key is on and for 30 seconds after the key is off and then a relay trips and it goes off. 
And so this is where we've pulled our power. And um, for the accessory wire on the radio and for the backup camera. So that took care of our accessory wire. All right. Now, your DVD player in these radios is designed only to work if you have the park brake pulled on. Okay? And so, um, that's a babysitter thing. That's so that the driver is not watching a movie while he's driving. But you know, if a passenger or a child in the back seat wants to watch something on this while you're driving, then you're going to want to bypass that. I can't recommend that you do that, but I'm going to. <laughs> and so, uh, in order to do that, what you need to do is you need to find the wire that's marked brake. That's for your park brake. It needs to go to ground. And once it's grounded, the DVD player plays when you put a DVD in it, regardless of where the brake is. So that takes care of that. And so that wire goes to ground. Okay. Then our next issue is this wire here marked reverse. This wire is what switches the radio to the backup camera view when you put the car in reverse. Now here again, when you get down here to the wires coming out of the back of the gear shift, they're right down here. That bundle of wires right there. You run into the same thing that you had up here with this twisted pair. This is controlled by a set of data wires to the computer and it's the computer that trips a relay somewhere and sends the power to the backup lights in the back. And so what we've done is we've come to the wire bundle here that has all the wires that go to the back of the vehicle and we've isolated the wire that has that signal in it. This wire is hot. I'm going to demonstrate this here. We have one of our test leads hooked to ground down here. We have the other test lead here. We're going to put the vehicle in reverse. We have the park brake on so that it won't go anywhere. And we're going to show that we have 12 volts. Can you see that all right? We have 12 volts in this wire. Now I'm going to put the gear shift back in park. And we're going to test this wire again. And we have no volts. This is the wire that's energizing the backup lights. And so we have the color of it. We're going to go down below. We can do it here, but we're going to go down below and find this wire down here, the same color. And we're going to hook a lead from it to this reverse wire. And then our radio is automatically going to show you the backup camera image when we turn the backup, when we put it in reverse. Okay. Now, the other thing we're going to do here, we've run a wire all the way to the back of the van. <clears throat> For the power going to the camera. Now you can go to the back of the van and you can pick up the backup light wire in the back and hook up that to the power on your camera and then hook the ground to the body someplace back there and every time you put it in reverse the camera's going to get energized, the radio's going to switch to the backup view and you're going to be able to see what's going on behind you. We want to be able to go to the menu on the radio and select camera and see what's going on behind us while we're driving. And so we're hooking a lead from the same place we got our accessory wire off the fuse block all the way to the back of the van so that the camera is energized all the time. When you turn the key off, 30 second delay, it's going to shut off. And later, We'll probably hook up a power source to that camera from back here in the in the back of the van, somewhere in the living area, that's got power fed from our solar batteries. So that we can actually take the video feed coming from it, put a Y in the circuit, and have it on a TV in the back, and flip a switch and be able to look out the back of the van 
in case something's making a noise and we wonder what it is. This is kind of a security cam. So that's what we're going to do. We've got the wire uh, patched in here. This wire is hot and the key is on. It's going to the back. We're ready to place the camera. We need to hook a wire from this wire down below up here to the reverse wire. And then we've got all the wires except for the rear speaker wires. We pulled the feed for our reverse switch on the back of the radio. This is the wire that goes to the backup lights in the back. It was easier to get to here than it was down under the dash and so we ran a wire from here to the reverse wire on the back of the radio. These are the rear speaker wires. Positive, negative right, positive, negative left for the rear speakers. And we have routed those with the rest of our wires back in the back, which we will hook up at a future date when we get some rear speakers. And that was the uh, the last of the wires that we needed out of these bundles to be hooked up. Here's our antenna adapter. The van had this type of antenna connection. The radio has this type. This is the adapter we got from Crutchfield. It goes in here like that. And then this antenna wire snaps onto it like that and we're good to go and but our main one is our camera going in and we have that hooked up we have our uh, camera extension wire we bought an extra 20 feet of extension wire with this wire tied onto it we'll be able to get all the way to the back so we can get the video signal up here and where it makes the junction at one of these points is where we will later put a Y on it so that we can take that signal and also run it to a TV in the back. All right, here is the backup camera mounted up here. The camera looks pretty good up there. I think it'll be really helpful to have. And we have the navigation antenna and the XM radio antenna mounted here on the roof. Okay, hit, hit the uh, top left, hit the bottom right arrow, hit camera, okay, it's like upside down or something, so I'm going to... Alright, we are adjusting the camera and getting it so we can see is right behind us, so if we need to turn it on when we're parked we can see if there's anything right right behind us if we heard a noise or something. Let me know when it looks level. Like right about there. Yeah, I don't know which part's supposed to tighten up right about there. Okay, we have radio on. We can manually select our camera and we see our camera view out the back. We can go back to our radio, put the van in reverse, and we have our camera view out the back when we put it in reverse. And this is what we were after. We want to be able to see that whenever we choose as well as have it automatic when we put it in reverse. And so there it is. We have the key off now. The van is shut off. We still have power to our accessory wire for about 30 seconds. It's been 15 or 20 seconds here. Shortly the radio will kick itself off. And if you were here, you would hear it click.
Okay, so that is it on the radio installation and backup camera on our custom sprinter van conversion. So don't forget to subscribe to our channel and make sure to hit the like button so we know you like these type of videos and we will continue to make more.